Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we practiced early in the week and did a lot of corrections from the game and, and uh, now kind of start turning our thoughts to, uh, to Texas. Since your uh, tech release shows updated COVID-19 numbers this week, and it showed that 75 people had had it uh, since y'all started testing in June. That being the case, how much practice time did your defensive backs in particular or your defense in general, your first team guys, have together in August? Depends on who you want. And, and, and early September. I mean, it just depends on who you want the 11 starters to be. We, we missed quite a bit of practice time. I don't have an exact number for you, days or minutes or practice periods, but it just depends on who your 11 starters are. Um, but what, to what extent does that affect the continuity and the cohesion of those guys? Well, I think everyone can draw their own conclusions, Don, that – um, if you have quite a few guys miss practice, then you know the chemistry is not where you would want it to be um, when you miss practice time. We all understand that. Uh, some of that is um, not so abnormal with football because we're used to that with injuries and things like that. And we have a large amount of numbers, and you know we, it won't ever be an excuse um, for me or this program. I'm trying to answer your question directly without it being an excuse. Um, but I certainly, um, the more numbers you have out, the less continuity and less chemistry and, and those kind of things happen. Um, but we're also tasked with the uh, uh, playing and practicing in the midst of a pandemic. And so that's going to be part of the challenge as we continue throughout the season. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, you've, you've got to start with number 11. He is, uh, you know, the leader of that offense, has been for quite a while. A lot of respect for Sam. Um, he has ability to throw the ball and pull it down and run it. Um, if you drop a lot of guys and, and uh, you know, only rush three, we certainly saw that last Thanksgiving. Um, they've got um, several really good running backs, big wideouts as always. A uh, few more tight ends, it seems like, this year that are athletic and strong and block very well. And then, um, you know, a really big, really big offensive line with some future NFL guys up there. So we'll certainly have our hands full up on the front. Uh, but the, the whole offense runs through Sam. And you can tell his confidence. He's been very accurate. Um, he, he had a really good game Saturday. I've got a lot of, a lot of respect for him. Yeah, I think, you know, you're, you're in the middle of a bye week right now. It's Thursday in the middle of a bye week. We're nine days away. But I think it starts to become – it's starting to become more real. And, you know, we, we haven't pushed it to up until this point. You know, tomorrow we'll get a little bit of a head start on them, on Texas. So, uh, yeah, our guys – it's a rivalry. It's a big game for our guys, and, and uh, they'll be emotionally ready to go. Uh, nothing new, John. Really, from from then after the game, we got beat. We got beaten man coverage a few times. We didn't land pressures. Um, uh, Cappy was really good. Just like I said before the game, he's got a lot of moxie. Um, very, very good quarterback. They made some good catches. Uh, I thought we played very, very well against the run, but uh, we we did. We had some breakdowns in the back. A couple communication breakdowns. Uh, a couple things in man technique. 
and um, you got got exposed a little bit, you know. So kind of the same thoughts I had coming off the field. It didn't really change much once we saw the tape. Good, how are you? I'm doing well. How do you think playing an up-tempo offense like Houston Baptist last weekend prepared your defense, not only for Texas, but just for Big 12 play? Well, there's certainly some teams in the league that, that play with up-tempo. Temp, uh, uh, Houston Baptist did it at times. They did it with some, um, some different formations. They did a nice job. You know, I, I tip my hat to them. They did a good job. But, you know, the, the, uh, the pace – the tempo of our offense, our defense going against them quite a bit. Uh, I think um, they'll be ready for tempo um, in, in this league. Go back to Don Williams. Matt, later in the game the other night on your next to last position on the fourth down play uh, that you went for it and did not get, could you have challenged the spot on that or is that a consideration on the side or You know, Don, and those those that scrum. <laughs> um, you know, you're. I don't. I did not think. You know that challenging it. You know, as you saw it, I I was fairly close to that line of scrimmage, back a little bit. But you get a quarterback in the middle of the pile, and there's bodies everywhere. It just depends on where those two line judges roll in and where they're going to put their foot. They're going to put their foot on the back of the ball. They put their foot on the front of the ball. I don't think TV and even confirmed for me after I saw the TV copy and some of the replays and even from our coaches video, pretty tough to see in a, in a big old pile of that. You, you know, it becomes a, a referee's call and a decision there. Also, uh, early in the game, what happened to the, that interception that Allen threw where Belgian and like turned away or made a different break right as, right as the ball was in the air? No. No, Dalton didn't. He did not break away. He broke to the middle of the field. Allen threw it just a shade early. Should have just let him clear the backer. But no, it was a correct read by Dalton, correct read by Allen. Just a little soon in the timing. Uh, what kind of update can you give us on Jalen Hutchings since he came off uh, in the second half the other night? Yeah, he's day to day right now. Yeah, be a game time decision. Do you not see him come off the field? <laughs> I missed that, honestly. D-Dub, I'm surprised with your binoculars up there. <laughs> I, I caught him, you're right, but I was looking down when that happened. You got me. It's all good. I'll, I'll go back and check the tape. <laughs> what, did you tell TJ, what did you tell TJ about uh, What did you tell TJ about reaching for the goal line, especially being a senior? Oh, it has nothing to do with his age classification. Uh, it's just a teaching moment. We don't reach the ball across the, the goal line or the first down marker unless it's fourth down to the last play of the game. And so it's just a teaching moment. doesn't matter if they're a freshman or they're a senior. We teach them. We coach them all the way through. Um, TJ knew it. He knew it as soon as he got to the sidelines. He says, I know, Coach, I know I'm not supposed to reach it across unless it's fourth down to the last play of the game. There's just not many guys, Don, that can start reaching from the three-yard line and actually get it to the goal line. Yeah, no, uh, good question. I have not been asked that today. Um, you know, I'm excited about Tyree and his eligibility and happy for him and his, his family. And, um, you know, we just – Tyree's still working to get in shape. We obviously got him late in August in training camp. And so the uh, – I believe he probably will play against Texas. To what role, I don't know yet. Obviously, we're nine days away, and so that is yet to be determined. 
and so the role um, will, uh, you know, we'll wait and see where that is. But, uh, you know, as the year goes on, I believe that role will expand from wherever it is here in the Texas game on. And, but, yeah, I'm excited uh, for him, and he adds some uh, size and some girth to our D-line. Yeah, you know, I think there were several freshmen that stood out. Taj Brooks, Jalen Polk, uh, Trey Cleveland's a redshirt freshman. John Holcomb, true freshman tied in. Caleb Rogers, true freshman left tackle. I uh, played eight or nine snaps. Blitty, uh, Philip Blitty, a DN. I think he played 11 or 12 snaps and had a half a sack. You know, the thing that I was proud of those guys um, is the moment was not too big for them. Uh, they had a good... I thought they had a good look in their eye in warm-ups, and, and um, as they played throughout the game, some of those guys' roles will increase as we keep going. I think we'll get some other freshmen back. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of those guys that came into play, and, um, you know, I knew that we had signed a talented freshman class, and i um, happy for those guys to have early success. No, I just say, you know, Don, his late arrival to, to, to Lubbock and being here, not being with really anybody over the summer in training, training on his own and, um, and all that. We just, you know, we need to get him in shape and game shape, practice shape, then to game shape. And we all know how that is. And it's tougher for those big guys um, if they're not working out. And so he was not working out with anybody this summer. And so that's that's why I said that. And as he got into to uh, to August into training camp, um, you know, obviously sometime there at the kind of the beginning third or so of training camp. Also, uh, going back and uh, was watching a portion of the game last night on YouTube. Uh, Brandon Randall, particularly in the first half, said, or, well, particularly in the first half, got his hands on the football a lot. Yeah, very athletic he is, Don. Um, you know, he needs to catch one of those. Um, he uh, he is very athletic. I think the sky's the limit for for B. Randall. You know, he's a he's a guy that we have the ability that has the ability to play inside and outside. We do cross train him, but he can run. He made a really nice play uh, on a uh, on a vertical route against a running back on an inside uh, numbers fade route. He really made a really nice play. And so um, he's going to be, I think, the, the more game experience that he gets, I think he'll be a better, better player for us. He has the ability to rush off the edge and, and be a dynamic pass rusher. So um, Randall is, uh, you know, I, I, he's, he's been a good addition for us. How are you doing? I'm good in you. Uh, really, right now we're focusing on us, uh, making our corrections from the uh, from last week. Uh, you know, because really we have to fix ourselves before we can start focusing on another team. So really, just getting in our playbook and making sure we're running things to the best that we can and executing our scheme. What was the locker room atmosphere like after the HBU game? Where's kind of the team at? Uh, I mean, we we're happy to get a win, but we knew that. It wasn't the way that we wanted it to be. We knew that we could play better, and so that was really what the mindset was on getting our stuff right. So the next week, we can go out here and beat Texas. Go to Don Williams. Uh, Rico, to, considering you guys gave up 600 yards, did not perform as well as you wanted to. After looking at the film, how would you assess uh, the reasons for uh, you know for what happened? Um, we just had some miscommunication, so that's why, like I said, we're uh, 
you know, focusing on us, making sure that we understand our playbook to the best of our abilities and uh, making corrections and being able to communicate on the field and uh, communicate with the coaches so when we come off the field for, from a, thir a third down stop that we can get corrections going and so we can be able to execute the next drive. The coach acknowledged a moment ago that um, the number of guys that y'all had out during practice, you know, for COVID or whatever reasons, that makes a difference. Considering you're a senior, you've played a lot of college football, how much difference does it make when you don't have the same 11 guys, the same two deep out there every day in August and early September to get ready for that first game? Uh, it makes a tremendous difference. Uh, those guys don't get those reps, reps so uh, you really don't, you know, mesh together all the way, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, like, there was a lot of guys that hadn't – practice because of certain reasons but uh you know now that everybody's coming back and we're all good you know we're just focusing on us like I said uh trying to make sure we get our scheme down pat and uh you know just going out to be the best that we can be <clears throat> go ahead Don sorry one more question one more follow-up real quick but because of that, Rico, would you say was communication uh, worse than normal for a season opener? Uh, yeah, but that's just because, like, the, the incidents that we were in. I mean, we had a few guys out of practice, so we hadn't been able to, you know, get on the field and actually get those live reps and stuff like that. So, I mean, I feel like this week we're really pounding in on it, and uh, I think we'll, we'll have something for, for everybody to see this week. Go to Brady King. Hey, Rico, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Um, in what ways are, in what exactly do you know about Texas's offense and what little things are you guys working on this week to go up against them? Uh, I mean, we, we know Sam's a, a, he's a very good quarterback. He can, he can put the ball in nice places. So uh, we're making sure we're getting to those drops. And then uh, last year, they went, a lot of, they went in a lot of FIB and stuff like that. So we're going to make sure we shut down that run game and make them one-dimensional and then help out that back end. Anybody else have a question for Rico before we go to Keyshawn here in just a minute? We'll go back to Leah Doherty real quick. Sorry, I don't have the little raise hand feature on here for some reason, but <laughs> I asked Wills the same question. How do you think playing an up-tempo offense like HBU prepares you heading into not only Texas, but Big 12 play in general? Uh, I think it'll help us a lot because uh, the game will just slow down for us from now on, um, you know, so we'll be able to get those calls and make those calls to our teammates or to my teammates and, you know, just be able to communicate so that we're all on the same page and so there's not as many MAs or busts. You're obviously a leader on this team. How do you encourage, especially a lot of the freshmen we saw get playing time, but in the locker room where y'all could almost be kind of disappointed about your performance last week, what's kind of your message and how are you encouraging those guys, especially heading into such a big game? Uh, really just to be one another the next day, you know, just get 1% better every day. Um, focus on us. Don't let the outside noise get into us, you know. Uh, we have to just mesh together and, you know, just encourage one another because we know that we can perform to the best ability that we can. <clears throat> Go to John Harris. Here we go. You, uh, you touched on this a moment ago and a question was asked about uh, success against the Houston Baptist running game. But Texas uh, is loaded up with big backs and a big quarterback in Ellinger. What sort of challenges does that uh, bring to you all from a stopping the run game perspective because Houston Baptist, small back, Texas, just big guys, big quarterback, and uh, what about dealing with that next weekend? Uh, I mean, like I said, we're just going to focus on us and uh, get make sure that we're prepared and with our scheme and meeting with coaches, getting that extra mental reps and then bringing it to the field. Uh, I think we got a good front seven and uh, – We'll be prepared for whatever's thrown at us. We'll finish with Don Williams. Uh, 
Rico, I guess after last season, one of the exciting things about this year for uh, some for you guys and, and for the fans, of course, was the, the home schedule. With teams like Texas and Oklahoma and uh, West Virginia and would have been Arizona coming in here, um, it looked like one of the most attractive home schedules that Texas had in quite some time. How big is the disappointment that you will not be able to have, you know, a, full, a normal full house uh, a team like Texas next week? I mean, it, it's a disappointing, but, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, our focus is to win, so we're just going to focus on winning the game. I mean, the crowd would be nice, you know what I'm saying, but – you know, our focus is going one and zero, and actually beating Texas, and then carrying that on to the next week. <laughs> the, uh, the atmosphere last Saturday night, the first time being out there with uh, with the limited capacity and, and so few people in the stands. Were, were you aware of that? that were, how, how much were you all aware of that, or are you so zeroed in on your responsibility that you don't even notice whether it's a Huge, huge crowd noise or, or very little crowd noise. Uh, yeah, for me, it's, it's I'm zeroed in on the game. Uh, I'm trying to make plays for my team so we can get the ball back to the offense, so we can go put more points on the board. Um, um, and I really think that's how it is for everybody. Uh, the, like I said, the home field advantage would be nice, but at the end of the day, we're not with the circumstances we have right now. We know we don't have that, so we have to buy in on what we have and just glow and perform. Your, uh, your old high school teammates moved on to the NFL. Uh, Devin, uh, you glad he's not going to be here next week? Or, uh, <laughs> or did you like playing against him? No, nah, I, I love playing against Devin, uh, you know, because, you know, we, we went to the same high school, so you get to talk trash during the week and stuff like that. But, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for him, and I can't wait to see how, how successful he is on the next level. <laughs> Thank you, John. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, just getting better every week, like new week, new opportunity. I mean, just working on new stuff, been watching film on them. So seeing like what their weakness is and like how I can fix like what I did last week. It's just really just coming into the game prepared. Yeah, what are some of those things that you've noticed from watching film that you want to kind of fix in your game before heading in? Uh, just making decisions like. Last uh, game, I was like hesitant by making my decision when I'm a break and then when I'm a sit down in the hole. Uh, now I'm just working on just going, just going. How would you assess your team's performance against Houston Baptist? Uh, it's a start. I mean, we we're progressing as we're going. Uh, we're getting better. We just gotta take it one game at a time. Go to Brady King. That's good. Good. Um, you were able to get uh, TV on Saturday. How did it feel to kind of get one under your belt, and um, did that kind of motivate you moving forward? Uh, it was great. I mean, the first TD of the season, and uh, I was just so excited uh, just to get that first one under my belt. Now, I hope many more to come. Awesome. Lee asked this earlier um, to Rico, but what was the atmosphere like in the locker room from your perspective after that game? Uh, it was, it was good. Uh, we just felt like we could have played better, but uh, we still got the dub. So I mean, still was happy about it. Go to John Harris. Thank you, Sean. Uh, once before on here, you talked a little bit about gaining weight for this season, and you may be up what about twenty pounds. Can you? Can you talk a little bit about how that weight gain is making you a better player? Uh, yes, sir. Um, the weight just made me, like, get more confidence uh, when I'm running the ball now. Uh, instead of, like, last year when I was 170, uh, I feel like taking them hits was hurting my body now. It feels like I could just run through it. And, like, it's easier to slip out of tackles now that I gain more weight. Uh, 
Uh, it boosted my confidence a lot. Uh, just coming to every game, uh, saying I'm a dog, and just really performing like to a high level, and just showing up every game just to get my team what they need. Go to Don Williams. Uh, I had a good preparation. Uh, I feel like I had a lot of rest this year since track got canceled, and I just really recovered and got my body right coming into the season. And just I really sat back and watched a lot of film and just studied my game and watched other opponents and just really broke down my game and just worked on some stuff I need to work on. So when, when you studied your Uh, well, one of the things was coming out of my cuts faster and like breaking down, like sitting down, like when I'm running my routes and comebacks, and and then another one was just really breaking tackles, like because I was getting tackled a lot, so I just felt like I need to work on not getting tackled. So I was just working on like drills with trash cans and uh cones, just going to the cones, like running through it and running through the trash can, like making my cousins hold the trash can. Like put it away so I can cut in all that. Yeah. Are, are those the kind of things that it takes a, a year or two of college football to realize? Since most guys at this level are so much more talented than the guys across from them in high school, does it take a year or two in college to realize all the little things that you have to do well and perfect to really succeed at this level? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, it's just like studying the game more and like becoming a football junkie like when you get to college it's different from high school because guys are faster stronger then you got to like study like how they're playing and like how they uh, react to like running the ball and how you could block them and then how you can run the route on them so it's really a lot to the game so i just took it took me two years to learn so now i'm learning and i'm progressing Uh, I feel good about the rotation we have. Me and Dalton, uh, we got uh, speed, so they never know who's coming in. And like, if somebody gets tired, it's another person coming in with a speed. And we just make an impact to the offense. So, I mean, I feel good about it. pretty sad, but I mean, this is part of what's going on right now. And well, the good thing about it is we still get to play football and get some fans there. So just got to play hard. From that standpoint, what did it feel like out there last Saturday night? Um, take me back to high school, really, like seeing few like people in the stands and just like the little roar that I had, like take me back to high school. Go, we'll finish with Leah Doherty. They're a little off topic, but what are your thoughts on pursuing a, a track and field career after this football season? Where's your head at up on that right now? Uh, I really don't even know. I mean, uh, track is helping my speed on the field, so I mean, I'm going to stick with it and just get my all in there once I leave football. How do you think? 
it just lets me open up more like once I start running and like with track it helps me like bring it brings up my speed like when I'm running my route it gives me to my hot top speed on kickoff return and then yeah it just let me break out you kind of taking it day by day right now and waiting to kind of get through <laughs> the football season to figure out what you're gonna do yes <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're trying to focus on Texas right now <laughs> 